Hi, welcome to my channel EasyML. In the previous set of videos, we looked at the theory behind classification models, specifically the random forest algorithm. In this video, we will see how the random forest classification model can be built on the IRIS dataset. First, let us install the relevant packages that are a prerequisite to building random forest models. So I will use the install.packages function for that. So install.packages stats install.packages dplyr and then install.packages random forest random forest well now let's take a look at these packages in detail or why we need these packages the stats package has some of the most basic functions that are there in R. The dplyr package is a package that has functions that will help with data manipulation. And lastly, the random forest package. Well, as the name suggests, the random forest package has the necessary functions that will help build the random forest model. Note, I will not be running these lines of code since I have already installed these packages. Let us now use the library function to access the contents of these packages. So library stats library dplyr and then library random forest i'm going to select and quickly run these lines of code now you can see that the libraries of these packages have been successfully loaded let us now go ahead and load the iris dataset into the object called my data. Again, recall that the iris dataset is available by default in R. So my data, I'm creating an object called my data, which is equal to iris and then control enter. You can see in the environment tab that the object called my data is now created. It has 150 observations and five variables. Let us now deploy the view function to see the my data object in a tabular format. So, sorry, it's written base data. It's my data. So, let me go ahead, view my data, and then control enter. Here you can see that the my data tab has now appeared. As you can see here, there are five columns in this data set namely, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and finally, species. If you can recall in the previous video, I had mentioned that there are two steps before building the random forest model as well. One is variable selection and the other one is called splitting of data. We will now deploy the str or the structure function to select the relevant variables. So I'm going to go ahead str my data and then the output is going to appear in the console. So. Recall that one of the main objectives of any classification model is to predict a categorical variable. Here, if you look at the data type of all these variables, only species is a factor. And a factor is R's way of determining a variable as a categorical variable. Hence, species becomes my predicted variable or my target variable. As for predictors, I had mentioned in the previous video that it is business driven and it follows more of a trial and error approach. For those of you who need a refresher, please click on the link provided below. So conclusively, for now, I will be choosing species as my predicted variable or my target variable and I'll be using all the other variables that is sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width as my predictors. If the accuracy of the model, if the accuracy of the classification model is bad, then I will change the predictors or my input variables till my accuracy improves. Now, let us move on to the second step that is splitting of data. Recall, we split the data into training and testing. The model or the classification model will be built on the training data set whilst the accuracy of the model will be tested on the testing data set. I will use the sample function again to create an index to split the data. So let me go ahead. Index is equal to sample function to comma n row my data comma replace is equal to true. is equal to 
I'm going to have a 70-30 split here, 0.3 and then control enter. Here you can see that we are splitting the data into 70-30. Here 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. So that is 70% of the data is assigned to the training set and 30% of the data is assigned to the testing set. Recall when we built the regression model in R, I explained the sample function in greater detail. For those of you who need a refresher, please click on the link provided below. Let us now build the training and testing data. I will create two objects namely training and testing. So let me go ahead and create an object training is equal to my data where index is equal to 1 comma and then testing is equal to my data where index is equal to 2. So let me just quickly run this. From all the observations in my data, I will be selecting those observations whose index is equal to 1 to get the training data. Similarly, from all the observations in my data, I will be selecting those observations whose index is equal to 2 to get the testing data. Note that the process of splitting data into training and testing is very similar to when we built the regression model. Now since we have completed steps 1 and 2, that is variable selection and splitting of data, let us go ahead and build the random forest model to predict for species. I will now load the random forest model into an object called RFM. I will use the random forest function from the random forest package to build the random forest model. So RFM is equal to random forest species tilde dot comma data is equal to training and then control enter let me just execute it so now we have built the random forest model we can see in the environment tab that the rfm object or the model is now created here let us go and inspect the random forest function in a little detail now here within the random forest function i have first written my predicted variable here, my predicted variable is species. As I explained previously, the tilde sign means followed by. Here I can see, if you can see that there's a tilde sign, this essentially means followed by. And here I have put a dot, if you can see here, as I've highlighted. This dot essentially represents all the other variables. So instead of naming each and every variable, if I just press dot, if I, if I just put dot, it essentially means all the other variables except for species. So instead of writing each and every variable, we can just put a dot. This is a sort of a shortcut for you. So finally, the data set on which I'm building the model is obviously the training data. Therefore, data is equal to training, as you can see here. Now let us move on to evaluate the model accuracy. We will use the predict function. Recall even in the regression model, we use the predict function to evaluate the model accuracy. Here also we are using the predict function. So we will use the predict function to get the predicted values of species. I will be storing the predicted values of species in an object called species pred. So let me just go ahead and create species underscore pred is equal to predict rfm comma testing and then control enter. Now, let us break down the predict function again. First, in the predict function, I feed the random forest model that I have built on the training data set. Then I pass the testing data set, as you can see here. That this, so basically, this is the data on which I'm going to test, or in other words, predict on. So now I will add the predicted values of species to the testing data set using the dollar symbol. So let me go ahead, testing dollar, I'm adding a new column called species underscore pred, which is essentially equal to this object that I've created right here. Yeah. So now let's just go ahead and control enter. Now that I've successfully executed this, let us go ahead and view the testing data view testing control enter 
So you see that the testing data set is appeared as a tab now. Now, here in the testing data set, I have actual values of species and predicted values of species. So for the first observation in the testing data set, the actual values of species is Setosa. And the model has also correctly predicted the values of the species to be Setosa. Here you can see that. So we will compare the predicted and the actual values to check for prediction accuracies. So what is the actual uh, uh, you know, cat, uh, value of the species and what is the predicted value of the species? And we are going to compare whether the model has predicted the species correctly or not. One of the best ways to evaluate the prediction accuracy of any classification model is through a confusion matrix. For those of you who need a refresher on confusion matrix, please click on the link provided below. We will use the simple table function to build the confusion matrix. So I'll just go ahead here and I will store the confusion matrix in an object called CFM. CFM stands for confusion matrix. So CFM is equal to table function. So testing. So I'm going to take the actual species and compare it with the testing predicted species and then control enter let me go ahead and now let's look at the confusion matrix which is going to appear in the console here voila so now let us go ahead and inspect the confusion matrix when we went through the confusion matrix i had explained that we need to look at the diagonal diagonal these values essentially so the diagonal values suggest correct prediction so let us go, go and look at these values one by one. So for all the observations in the testing data set that belong to the species Setosa, the model has corrected all the observations as Setosa. So in the testing data set, if this, the, an observation had uh, the species to be Setosa, all the observations have been correctly predicted as Setosa. Similarly, in the testing data set, all the observations that belong to the species Versicolor have been correctly classified as Versicolor here but if you can see for virginica you can see that all uh, the, out of 13 observations 12 observations have been correctly classified as virginica but one observation has been misclassified into versicolo so therefore the accuracy of the model can be calculated as the sum of the diagonal divided by all the observations in the testing data this calculation will be stored in an object called classification accuracy. So let me go ahead and create that object called classification accuracy. So classification underscore accuracy is equal to sum of right all the diagonal values in the confusion matrix divided by sum of all the values in the testing data set. So all the values in the confusion matrix essentially. So I go ahead, control enter, and then let's take a look at the classification accuracy. Control enter. Wow. So, uh, so therefore, the accuracy of the random forest model built to predict species using input variables such as sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width is around 97%, which is extremely good. So so essentially because I've got such a high accuracy, I don't need to go and revisit the predictors or shuffle the predictors or look at how I can change the input variables. Because I've already got a very high accuracy, I can just let this model be. In the next video, we will look at how we can summarize this whole workflow when it comes to building random forest classification models. Thank you and stay tuned.